Hi, I'm Gary Linden. I have the pleasure to be here with Dick Brewer in the Brewer family wood vault. I've never seen a collection like this. I didn't even know something like this existed. What's it like for you to be in here, Dick? Well, it's really a wonderful thing. All the, my, the years of work, Michael and his brother Chucky have been collecting the boards. They now own their, what was their dad's uh, tool and die company and plastic company. Uh, now they, they run it. They've provided enough room to store all these boards, you know. That's part of it, having the place to store it, but just, uh, they're also beautifully displayed. You walk in here and it's just like, boom. A wood board, if it's stored properly, and kept cool out of the sun, would probably last three or four hundred years. I live in Honolulu, yeah. which is called the most beautiful place in the world, and I have a shaping room in the back of my four, four acres. And my nephews, Chucky and Michael Brewer, in California, run my company in California. They build brewers in, in, in San Diego with you at Oceanside. And the surfing world has no perception of how many wood boards Dick Brewers built. We're two of dime makers, the brewers. You know, my dad's, when I was a kid, he owned a tool and die company. My brother, Chuck, and I, by the time we were 16, we could run any machine in the shop. Then I went off and went to Long Beach State and went to college, and my brother kept working for my dad. And then finally, my brother wanted to open a, a plastic injection molding company. And my dad said, no, we're, we're dye makers. We make molds. And so my brother went out and started his own plastic injection company. And that's where we are right now, with his son Michael standing right there. Uh -huh. So it's the third generation of brewers in the, in the tool and dye industry, and also in the plastic injection molding industry. I brought technology to shaping. Yeah. Where most shapers are, are carpenters. I'm a tool and die maker. I can make anything within a thousandth of an inch. I envision in my mind what I want the deck rocker to look like uh -huh. first. Uh -huh. And then I, I make the deck rocker perfect with a flat deck. I turn it over and I foil the thickness, put the concave in the bottom if it's got a concave through the, through the middle of the board. Right. And put the V in it, or the double barrel, which is pretty normal right now, in the back, or make it full concave all the way out the back, whichever I'm going to do. I start a doming the deck mm -hmm. by taking a double cuts on the rail, and then less cuts as you go up to dome it, uh -huh. um, and get the dome the dome deck totally, you know, the way I want it. Because we're, we're in the dome decks now. They have a little thinner rail and more rail rocker. When you get a dome deck, the rail has more rocker. Can you feature that? Mm -hmm. um, so they go around corners better. That's why, one of the reasons I know that's why what motivated you to shaping. You wanted to ride a different way. You always wanted to ride a better way. Well, I was a water skier, you know, uh -huh. when I was in college. and. Slow and turns and jumping and, and whatnot were, were pretty much part of water skiing at that time. Uh -huh. And so I knew that surfing, uh, I wanted to go to uh, this place in, in Seal Beach that uh, has big waves with the ski boat we, me and my buddies had, but they didn't want to go for it. They didn't want to do it. But I wanted to try towing at that. What, time, what year would that have been? 1959, probably. You're already thinking about towing surfing. Yeah, I was already thinking about it. No wonder you, you... Because we were water skiers, and the slalom turns we were making on water skis, I knew surfing had to be there. Yeah. And we had these big clumpy, clunky t tanker things, you know, and I was looking at a water ski, and I knew that that's where it had to go to. And that's why you make such great tow boards, probably. And we had short... We had short square tail jumpers for jumping. Really? And we had real slalom look, uh, looking boards for, for slalom surfing. That's back in the 50s. And that was state of the art at that time. And so I knew surfing had a long ways to go. You 
know, Doug and I, we built some boards together. In fact, there's one year that's a classic that to the same era, Dog Bone had a house right on the water in Lahaina, Maui. Herbie Fletcher brought some wood over. Uh -huh. It was the lightest wood I've ever seen. I was, yeah. And I shaped his 10-6 when it was chambered. It only weighed seven and a half pounds. It was 12 pounds brand new for a 10-6 full gun. So that's amazing. Light. So light. And I know Herbie still has that board in his collection. Well, that's the thing. If you get the light wood and you hollow it out right, you could actually make a lighter board a wood board that you can't foam. Oh yeah, that was the fact, that board showed it. And then my favorite was that five stringer and it was a 710. Yeah. It was so light with the boxy rails and a really foiled tail and a beak nose and you just... It, it was off. totally that era, that, you know, Sammy Hawk and, and what we were riding at that era and that board is Works right so from that era. That's, yeah. a, that's one of the changes for the short board gun right there. Well, they, you know, those boards are really fast to this day. It's Super probably some of the fastest boards we've ever had. I think so. The boards have pretty much dominated big ways for 50 years. That, that's uh, the truth. Yeah. You know that. I think so. There's new toys coming. Always for us, too, you know? You know, from windsurfing to kite surfing to the stand-up paddling, there's always some new form of, of surfing to uh, experiment with, and I've been involved in all of those things. The market uh, suffered like everybody else, you know, but uh, now people are finding that they really do want really hand-shaped custom brewer boards. The guns are, are so developed through the years that uh, you can't go wrong on a brewer.